Good morning, Internet. My name is Jack, and today we shall look at a paper called Cross-Attention Multiscale Vision Transformer for Classifying Images, which is brought to you by MIT and IBM Labs. So, in the field of computer vision, deep learning models have enabled computers to interpret, process, and understand digital images and video data from the physical world. Such deep learning methods, like a simple feed-forward network, a convolutional network, and a vision transformer, all of them work because of its ability to create different levels of representation in its feature maps. For instance, a convolutional network produces a wide range of features, from pixel edges to a holistic object view. So the question is, what happens if you inject these different levels of information into the model explicitly? This brings us to the premise of the whole paper. Are there any classification accuracy improvement from injecting different levels of information into the vision transformer? In order to inject different levels of information, they constructed a model which takes in two groups of the same image. The small branch on the left-hand side takes a small image patch size, and the large branch takes a larger patch size. The small branch has fewer and smaller encoder layers compared to the large branch, as shown on the slide. After processing the two different image patches, we need to know how to combine them into a single object, which we can use to perform image classification. They propose four different approaches, starting from all attention fusion and all the way to cross attention fusion. They are all pretty much similar, except for the cross attention fusion method. What the cross-attention fusion method does is that it performs a cross-attention operation between the class token of the large branch and the small branch image patch tokens. Intuitively, this allows for both branches to enrich the overall image representation. According to an ablation study on ImageNet 1K, the cross-attention fusion method seems to outperform the rest of the fusion methods by achieving the highest top one accuracy. You can see that the large branch contributes more in accuracy with all the fusion methods. The cross-attention fusion method seems to balance out the accuracy improvement between the large and the small branches. This could be an indication that the two branches learn different useful information. Apart from that, they also try out smaller patch sizes for the small branch as compared to the patch size of 12. What is interesting is that using a smaller patch size causes the accuracy to drop. This is kind of weird because one would expect that having smaller patch sizes would allow the small branch to possess more fine-grained information about the image. They also try to increase embedding dimensions and the number of encoder layers in the small branch and they found no accuracy improvements. The explanation that they gave is that the large branch has the quote unquote the large branch has the main role to extract features while small branch only provides additional information. Thus a lightweight branch is enough. From our perspective, this is true from what we saw in the previous slide. The large branch contributes more accuracy improvement to the small branch. Similarly, Increasing the number of cross-attention layers for fusion does not improve the accuracy of the model, which means that we might have reached a bottleneck here. The model outperforms the small models of all the other variants of the vision transformer models, with comparable flops and less than 100 million parameters. This demonstrates the strength of using multi-scale representations. It also outperforms typical convolutional networks by a large margin of accuracy with comparable flops. 
at the bottom of this figure, we also see that they attempted to increase the embedding size of the large branch. The result is a 0.2% accuracy improvement with the cost of two-fold decrease of flops, which is not good. Overall, we can say that the cross vision transformer model outperforms better. We also get some insight into the different feature maps of the small and large branches. Just by looking at the pictures, I can't really tell the difference between them. In my opinion, what they really should have done is to show us the exact attention matrices overlaying on top of the images so that we can see what the small and large branches are focusing on. And I actually wonder if it's actually possible to stack more than two branches, like maybe six branches with six different patch sizes. Maybe this is something that someone has done already, but who knows? Anyway, that's all I have to say about this paper. Leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you all next time. Bye.